everyone and welcome back to the Class 47 Peter YouTube channel. And in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at the FE Rail Class 143 Pacer, which Batman announced in the spring 2023 announcements. And so I bought myself one of these because I wanted one. Simple as that. And this is also going to be the last review I'm going to be filming on the current layout because as soon as I've done this video the rest of the layout can be ripped up and then we can make a start with the rebuild so I'm not going to waste any time let's get this model open and get this video over and done with Now normally at this point I'd straight away start talking about how this model had no quality controls etc and the details but before I go into any of that I do want to talk about the couplings. As you can see you've got this plug connector style coupling which is very similar to what we've seen before on the Batman Class 158 and the V2 for example. And also you have this coupling here to connect the two together as well as the pins now will that coupling there withstand the test of time? I certainly hope it will right so the unit has been coupled up together now I wanted to show this being done on camera but I have to be honest that coupling is very fiddly to get it to couple up together to get them to connect so this is quite fiddly to do so I had to do this off camera so it's not the easiest to do but the two units are now together after a few minutes of trying to get them to connect so now we can move on to the actual model itself so when we unboxed it there doesn't seem to be any quality control issues not with externally I can't see, no chips in the paintwork or nasty marks or any bits that fell off that had to be glued back on again can't really see anything wrong with it in terms of the quality and also straight out of the box it's an absolutely smooth one and it actually works as well which is the main thing and the important thing with these models because the last thing you want to see is to buy a model like this to spend 200 odd quid on it only for it to not work when it turns up. That's the last thing that you want. The model does come with working directional lighting. The destination boards also light up as well. So as you can see there, you've got the lit up destination boards and the headlights and the interior lights which I will come on to in a bit. And there as you can see we have the tail lights. Now I have turned the lights off completely to show this. So as you can see that's the interior lighting that I'm now showing. First of all there's no light bleed. I did see photos somewhere that one of the models, the class 144 in the regional railways livery had a small amount of light bleed. Looking at this model there doesn't seem to be any as you can see clearly. Which is great because the last thing I would want to see is have to spend 212 quid on this model and then it has light bleed which wouldn't be acceptable at all. However the interior lighting on this model does look to be quite bright as you can see it's even brighter once the power is turned up fully it's almost like it's a sun lamp or something could almost have the abilities to 
cut the passengers inside this model. I know the interior lighting have to be fairly bright, but they do look to be perhaps a bit too bright for this model. So perhaps they could do with maybe being a little dimmer. But I'm just glad that there's no light bleed. Also at this point, whilst we're here with the lights turned off, I can show you all the interior detail, which isn't low quality at all. You can see all the seats in there, they've all been painted. The floor has been painted as well. And the detail that's just gone into the interior, I think is a work of art. It does need people inside there, arguably, and of course a driver and a guard even. So that's something I might look into in the future. One thing I have noticed though, is on the glazing, you can see that there do appear to be some small cracks on those parts there on the inside of the interior. The glazing itself on the actual windows of the unit are not cracked, but those perspect pieces are, as you can see, on the inside of the interior. I guess perhaps when I eventually decide to get around to put figures inside there, it might not matter so much. It might be able to obscure those a bit. And to be fair, I think when this is running around the layout, you're hardly going to notice those. But still, though, I mean, that's something that could have been a little bit better there in terms of fitting. But then again, you know, they are only small cracks at the end of the day. It's not like there's cracks on the windows themselves. Which that's something I am thankful for. Now, interestingly, with this model, and I could be wrong here, because I have heard more than one different side, but apparently this is a model that's been inspired by the Real Track models tooling. It does look similar to the Real Track tooling, but apparently it's a model that has been inspired by the Real Track model, as it's not the same as the Real Track model interesting. I mean again it could be wrong there but I'm not going to dwell into all of that. As for the model itself I am pleased that I did get one of these because I did want a pacer for the fleet. I know that the pacers are very marmite. You either love them or you hate them. There's some people out there that do love them and arguably there's plenty out there who absolutely can't stand the things. But regardless, whether you do love them or loathe them, they are important in railway history and you have to respect that. Well, so now we can actually move on to the detail. So first of all, does this look like a 143? I would say so, yes. I know there have been some deliberate errors with this model, apparently, from what I understand. But when I look at it, it still definitely looks like a 143. So I think, to be honest, any of the deliberate errors that this model may have, I think are perhaps subtle. It still definitely looks like a 143. And the model, regardless, even if there are some deliberate errors, it still looks the part. This model comes fitted with slim tension lock and M couplings. They will be getting replaced with the couplings, the dummy ones, that are supplied in the accessory bag. So I shall be fitting those. Probably before we come into the running session part of the video actually. They've also captured the face of the unit spot on. They've got all the details there spot on and correct and the proportions and the detail. You can see there we have a separately fitted lamp iron in the middle of the unit. We've also got a separately fitted handrail there just underneath the windows. You've got the unit's running number 143622. Correct styled numerals and they've been crisply and well applied. And also on the window frames you have rivet detail. 
And just look at the detail that's gone into the window wipers. They're separately fitted, they're not moulded. And the detail on those looks stunning. Especially given the finesse that they have. Just look at how fine those wipers are. You've also got the top data panel crisply printed and well applied on the front of the unit as well. Moving to the underframe detail, you can see we have footsteps, axle boxes and springs, battery boxes and so on. And all the detail that's there, that's not moulded, that's separately applied. A couple of features that this model has. First of all, on the underframe of the model, you have these switches. So these are to turn the head and tail lights on or off. I think is a nice feature. You've also got these boxes over the axles on the wheels and that's on both units and you remove those boxes and that reveals the gears so then you can lube them up when you need to do so. You also have some separately fitted handrails there as you can see on the doors and they've been very nicely picked out and painted as well. Going down along the bodywork, we do have some rivet detail which is present and correct. So it's always nice to see the rivets. Sticking with rivets, there's plenty of those on the cab roof as well as the roof vents as well. You have the exhausts on the ends of the units. They're separately fitted and they've been nicely picked out and painted as well, as per the prototype. So this livery is the Tyne and Wear PTE livery, which for some reason I haven't mentioned until now. And I do think that this is a very striking and attractive livery. And I do think it's a livery that suits these units rather well. Moving on to the livery application, now I just want to quickly point out, if it looks like that this model looks like it's banana shaped, it isn't. It's to do with the baseboards on this layout. Looking underneath the layout, I can see that they are dipped. But that's not going to really anything to worry about because this layout is getting rebuilt and these baseboards are going to be ripped up anyway. And so hopefully on the new layout, we won't have any dipping boards as well because I'm hoping to cure that as well to stop that from happening on the future layout. So just thought I'd quickly explain that away. But moving on to the livery application itself, it's spot on. It is a stunning livery application. It's a livery that's been very well and evenly applied. No blemishes or any imperfections anywhere in the paintwork. Which we don't want to see, even for a 212 quid model. Or one that costs a little bit more, like the weathered ones. Although personally I wasn't too keen on the weathering on the weathered models, but there we go. The colours that they've got, they are the correct shades, and they've got the colour spot on as well. You have the yellow, the blue and the white. And the way the livery has been applied, it just looks stuck. You've also got the TW Pacer and BRRO logos crisply applied on the body sides. And the logos are correct, and they've been very well and evenly applied and crisply applied as well, I should add as well. Even going right down to the no smoking signs in the windows, you can see clearly that this is no low quality model. So that's pretty much all there is to cover with this model. There's not really a lot to these paces. I pretty much covered most if not all the detail that's there and that I can cover. So I think naturally what we need to do now is to have a running session with this model. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm looking forward to getting this running on the layout because this is going to be one of the only times that you'll see this model running on this layout. Because when you see it again in the future, it will be on the new layout. And this model also needs to be properly running as well.
Right, so you've just seen the FE Rail Class 143 Pacer running on the layout. A couple of things I should point out during the running. There seemed to be a sort of noise when I noticed it running in certain areas of the layout. Only one or two, which you probably would have heard in the footage. Don't understand what's going on there, but doesn't affect the model running, so there we go. Also, I did add a couple of shots of the 143 going into the bay platforms which that will be the only time that you'll see that model using those bay platforms though I have to be honest it did take quite a few shots to get some perfect shots that I was happy with for them to be used because it didn't really like the bay platforms that much it derailed on the points Although, to be fair, that set of points there in particular, I have had issues with some of the other DMUs derailing on it anyway. So there we go. Didn't particularly like the slightly sharp curve on that bay platform either. But there won't be any bay platforms on the next layout. So I will make sure that the curves obviously are going to be a lot more gentler. So there won't be any issues there. But... You know, regardless, apart from those little things, it's run around the layout pretty well. No issues with derailments or not being able to go around the sharp curves on this layout, which are basically just train set type curves. She ran around the layout pretty well. No issues with the running there, to be fair, on the main part of the layout. So that's great. So it will make a nice addition to the fleet I think. Do I recommend one of these? Only if you're willing to spend this amount of money on a pacer and if you want one. If you do want one I'd say go through it because it is a stunning model to be fair it really is. If you're not willing to spend that much money then I would probably suggest waiting to see if there's going to be a price drop. But Am I glad I bought it? Yes, I am. It will be nice to have in the fleet. It's something to bolster the DMU fleet in the collection. And it will be just nice to have this running around on the layout. It's something a little bit different. I wouldn't say I massively love Pacers in real life. I don't hate them. Certainly not. I can celebrate and respect them because they are important in railway history. But I'm not massively in love with them. I will be honest, but I don't hate them, and to be fair, whilst they're not perfect, they're not, I would consider to be, they're not the worst train in the world, I certainly don't think so, but you know, make of them what you will or won't. So that's it then for this review on the FE Rail Class 143 Pacer in the Tynemware PTE livery. Thank you all so much for watching. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you like what you see then please do subscribe to the channel. Smash the like button and feel free to post a comment. And check out all the other videos I've got on the channel. But until next time, take care. Bye for now.